Good morning, everyone. I am Lorenzo Pellegrini, and today I'll present you our latest work, Latent Replay for Real-Time Continual Learning. I want to thank all the organizers of the IRAS conference, as well as all the people that made it possible to present our work today. Many of you may already know what continual learning is about, but I think it's better if I spend a few words about it and on why continual learning is so important for robotic devices. Uh, continual learning is a research area of the broader artificial intelligence field, and in particular is a branch of machine learning that has strong connections to neuroscience. And the goal of continual learning is to allow intelligent systems to autonomously adapt their internal knowledge by incrementally learning from new experiences in a way which is similar to the one observed in biological systems. And that is learning in an autonomous way without retraining from scratch, from scratch and without the need of having any kind of human expert guiding the training. And it's not easy to create such a system with those characteristics and simply put a system incrementally trained using classical machine learning approaches like backpropagation and gradient descent uh, will forget all previously accumulated knowledge. This is called the catastrophic forgetting phenomena. Robotics and continual learning are strongly tied together. Uh, continual learning can enable for adaptive robotic applications, which can learn in an autonomous way, while robotics in, is an excellent field of application for the continual learning research. Uh, designing real-world applications provides for new practical issues and challenges that can boost the continual learning and, in general, the artificial intelligence research. And, however, beware that most of the continual learning literature does not actually target robotic systems. So, in our work, we had to explore an uncharted area by creating a solution that also considers the constraints commonly found in robotic devices. In our work, we wanted to target a scenario that had to be realistic, and in particular, we addressed a scenario belonging to the robotic vision area. And many existing continual learning techniques are aimed at artificial benchmarks. And in continual learning, defining a benchmark means choosing an appropriate dataset, and for that dataset, define the composition of incremental batches. And each incremental batch can be seen as an experience our system is exposed to and from which the system can acquire some knowledge about the world. And so the goal here is to recreate a real world situation for a robotic system. And in order to create such a realistic scenario, one must choose a realistic dataset plus a realistic order in which data is present to the system. We start by choosing a realistic dataset. And Continual Object Recognition 50, Core 50, is a publicly available dataset made of videos, which each, with each video depicting a single object being kept in front of the camera by a human operator. And this is very different from other datasets usually used in deep learning and continual learning too, uh, where we usually have a single image of an object, usually taken out of context, like uh, in the ImageNet or Cypher datasets. And on the contrary, Core 50 includes 11 video sessions for each of the 50 objects in the dataset, and each video features a different pose, illumination, and background. And given the dataset, we choose to address the most realistic scenario, where each incremental batch consists of a single video from the Core 50 dataset, and videos can either depict a previously seen or never seen before object, which means that each object is first introduced in a random moment of the lifetime of our system. And the system gets to see the same object more than once in random moments with different pose, domination, and background. This is indeed realistic, but it's also very difficult to tackle. And frames in each batch are come from the same video, which means that they are highly correlated. That is, they are not IID. And in addition, we have 391 incremental batches, which makes the catastrophic forgetting issue even harder to cope with. Mm -hmm. And consider that most continual learning algorithms found in literature uh, usually handle between 10 or 25 incremental batches only. Let's start talking about the proposed approach by first looking at one of the most commonly used techniques in continual learning, which is replay. 
and simply put, replay means selecting and storing few patterns from the current incremental batch uh, so that they can be replayed in later steps. This greatly boosts accuracy metrics because it helps in alleviating forgetting and provides a stabilizing effect. And moreover, replay is very simple and can usually add to the top of algorithms that were not created with replay in mind. And um, no surprise, it has become very, very popular. And however, replay has a huge performance impact. We have a lot of extra forward and backward passes to run during training because we have to train with a lot of more patterns. And this is usually not a problem in the continuous learning literature because algorithm performance is usually of secondary importance, being the accuracy metric the most important scoring method. And the second problem is the storage usage. You need to store previous patterns in a persistent memory, and usually the more patterns you store, the higher the accuracy result. Uh, summing up, replay in its pure form is too inefficient for robotic but applications, so we want to get the benefits of it while minimizing the negative aspects. And so we had this idea, uh, can we store instead of patterns in their raw form their activations at some intermediate layer? And in other words, can we just fill our replay buffer with semantically richer representations of the original patterns without disrupting the algorithm performance? And Yes, of course, the answer is yes, it works, and uh, let's see how it's done. This is a general schema of this idea. One can decide from which layer to store and replay the latent activations, a layer we call latent replay layer here colored in red. Uh, patterns from the current batch are forwarded from the input layer, they pass through the blue layers, and then at the latent replay layer, their activations are mixed with some of the ones coming from the replay buffer. Those activations are then forwarded to the final output layer, and then a classic stochastic gradient descent optimization can be used. And finally, when training is completed, the activation vectors of some randomly selected patterns are stored in the replay buffer. We keep a replay buffer of fixed size, which means that after each training iteration, we have to discard some previously stored patterns. Latent replay has several advantages over pure replay. Uh, first, on the efficiency side, we have a huge performance boost as the extra forward and backward steps are only done in the upper part of the network. And moreover, latent replay uses far less storage as it does not store raw patterns. And also, those activations can be usually compressed and quantized with a negligible accuracy loss. Uh, also consider that latent replay is very flexible. Uh, we can make different choices here that will allow us to choose the best accuracy performance trade-off. Speaking of which, in particular, one has to make two main choices here. The first is about the part below the latent replay layer, the part that was colored in yellow in the previous slides, and one can simply choose to completely freeze it, which brings the most efficiency advantages, but also limits the adaptability of the model, and one can choose to drop the learning rate or even just keep the batch normalization layers free to learn, which is our choice, or in future why not employ some kind of unsupervised learning techniques that slowly adapts them, why not, but beware that no matter what, this choice is not simple because allowing those layers to adapt over time means that the patterns stored in the replay buffer will suffer from an aging effect we which is a thing we don't get with pure replay. And the second choice is about the position of the latent replay layer. The lower its position, that is nearer the input layer of the model, and the higher the, accur the final accuracy. Uh, but on the other hand, this will have an impact on the algorithm efficiency. And also be aware that those, all those trade-offs are to be evaluated separately for each network architecture. And finally, one should pick the desired trade-off based on the specific application and the available system resources. Finally, results. We wanted to study the impact of both pure replay and latent replay on existing algorithms that are already performed decently on the 391 batches realistic scenario without replay. Uh, first on the left, we show how the pure non-latent replay mechanism can boost accuracy results on those algorithms, and in particular for the CWR star algorithm on the left in green, 
With just 1,500 replay patterns, we have an accuracy jump of about 15%, while for AR1 Star, which is the evolution of CWR, the boost is about 20%. Uh, here the difference between CUR and AR1, whose details you can find in the paper I referenced at the bottom of this slide, is that the CWR algorithm only works on the last layer, while the AR1 algorithm also manages adaptation at the lower layers of the model, while Pure Replay actually obtains an excellent result, uh, as I explained before, it has several drawbacks which are unacceptable for robotic and embedded systems. Uh, so in this work we propose AR1 Star 3, which is an even higher version of AR1, and here we use our proposed latent replay mechanism. And on the right you can see the results on the proposed scenario when choosing different replay layers on a mobile net version 1. And you can see that there is a consistent accuracy progression. And when moving the latent layer nearer the input layer, we get higher accuracies. And on the contrary, placing our latent replay layer on the higher part of the model, we get the worst accuracy results. And for instance, if we pick the pooling layer, which is just below the last fully connected layer, we get the result here shown as the blue line, which is the worst result we could get. This table summarizes the data in the previous image. Uh, on the left, under the layer column, you can see which latent replay layer the data refers to, and in particular, the first row images is the native non-latent replay. The second column shows the amount of computation needed to run a training step, being 100 the amount of computation needed by native replay. And the third column shows the size of the activation vector we have to store in the replay buffer if we choose that layer as the latent replay layer. In the fourth column, we have the final accuracy result. And in the final column, you can see the accuracy gap with respect to native replay. And as explained before, if we choose a layer in the upper parts of the network, we get worse accuracy results, but also get far lower computation impact. We compared our solution with other replay-based algorithms such as HiCar and the SLDA, and in particular we chose Convolution 5 for of the mobile net version 1 as the latent layer because it showed an excellent accuracy performance trade-off. So this is not even the best accuracy result we could get, but this is the one we get from the chosen optimal trade-off. And our method outperforms those algorithms by reaching a final 72% final accuracy, which is just 30% below the result obtained by the upper bound named cumulative, here shown in dashed black, which is the result obtained when trading on the fuel data set. Here, cumulative reaches a final accuracy of 85%. And in order to prove that this algorithm can be applied to real-life problems, we developed an Android application which exactly tackles the given scenario by allowing the user to incrementally train a mobile net version 1 in near real-time by only using the onboard hardware. Uh, here the proposed latent replay technique was of primary importance to make it possible. And uh, you can have a look at the video on YouTube, here link in the upper right part of the slide, where you will also find the related useful information. This concludes the presentation for our work. And uh, summing up, we believe that the robotics and continuous learning fields are by, bound by a common destiny, and however for continuous learning algorithms to work on robotic platforms, they have to be designed with a realistic scenario in mind, or one may end up getting an unusual usable algorithm, uh, which is a thing that happens in most continuous learning literature. Uh, our proposed approach, uh, latent replay, allows for efficient continuous learning on constrained devices like robots, embedded and even mobile devices, and in particular an algorithm that allows multiple trade-off choices is better, as it can be used in different situations uh, to tackle different problems on different uh, hardware platforms. And I hope you enjoyed this presentation and make sure you reach me or any of my colleagues if you have any question regarding uh, this work or any of our previous works or even just the Android application. And thank you for your attention and have a good day.